Welcome everyone. It's Andre Mikes and Frans Muller here from the Clifford Chance Tech Team with our key takeaways from the recently published Digital Services Act and Digital Markets Act. The proposals are, of course, part of the European digital strategy to upgrade the rules governing digital services in the EU and are indeed also part of a broader wave of new EU draft legislation aimed at regulating tech and future-proofing the rulebook we apply. But it's the DSA and DMA that are core to understanding how the EU hopes to reshape internet business practices and in particular, increase accountability and fairness. Franz, what has been your main observation on the DMA? And perhaps do you have a takeaway for general councils watching? Yeah, thanks, thanks, Andre. Um, well, the DMA truly is a game changer um, in the antitrust biosphere. Unlike existing antitrust rules, the DMA introduces ex ante regulation. The aim is, in short, to act quicker and more effectively against alleged harmful or unfair behavior by so-called gatekeepers. This is relevant to general counsel as the DMA affects both big tech in the wide sense, as well as those that do business with big tech. The proposal brings a lot of procedural complexity, which will be very burdensome to those companies involved. And it also brings considerable legal uncertainty, at least in relation to two prominent uh, elements. First, the DMA sets out some quantitative metrics or thresholds, uh, for example, by turnover, uh, market capitalization, uh, and active EU end users, which if exceeded by, for instance, an uh, individual online marketplace, a social media platform, or an online search engine, means that they are designated as a gatekeeper. However, even when a company does not um, exceed the quantitative uh, metrics, it can still, after a burdensome uh, market investigation by the Commission, be labeled a gatekeeper. And you guessed being a gatekeeper is not a, a form of praise, but rather it brings extra uh, responsibilities. Critically, and this is my second element, the DMA introduces far-reaching obligations and prohibitions for gatekeepers. Do's and don'ts that will significantly affect business activities as they currently take place. For example, gatekeepers will be required to enable interoperability with their products and thereby may facilitate uh, competition from smaller players. Another example is the strict prohibition uh, on the gatekeeper to restrict its platform users in freely pricing its products on other platforms. Also, gatekeepers will be required to inform the Commission of each and every digital services acquisition, no matter how small. Now, although lists of these do's and don'ts are included, they are still rather high level and thus open for quite some interpretation and dispute. So my um, advice to the uh, general counsel would be to follow this very closely uh, and, and see whenever this can become relevant to them. So Andre, what can you say on the DSA? Well, by its nature, the DSA has a much broader scope than the DMA, um, but also introduces obligations which accumulate depending on the type of service provider. So the structure currently proposed establishes four tiers of obligations which can be imagined to look like four concentric circles. So on the outer layer, we have a few basic obligations for all online intermediary services, which range from internet service providers to social media. Further in, we have obligations for the subset of hosting services like cloud providers. In the third circle, we have obligations for online platforms like app stores and online marketplaces. And then finally, only at the center of the circle, we have the most extensive obligations, which apply to so-called very large online platforms with more than 45 million users in the EU. In other words, general councils will need to think about and clearly determine in which bucket their organizations fall. But perhaps more importantly, they'll also have to continue monitoring their status as that can change over time and therefore different sets of obligations may apply. And now just to round off, we should remember that um, what the proposals will mean for tech companies, startup size or market dominating, won't be clear for months or even years, as the DSA and DMA have to go through the EU's typically bruising co-legislative process. And under this process, both the Parliament and the Council must jointly agree the final te texts.
and they can amend the Commission's proposal, and those changes can be minor or major. So the drafts presented last month really are a starting point, and plenty could shift or even change radically uh, through the coming debates and amendments. Um, that's all from us. Please reach out in case of questions. Fons and I are always happy to discuss on the DSA as well as the DMA. Thank you.